Hi everyone, my name is Terry, and welcome to Friday Fact Day, where I get to tell you a little bit about my work in fitness, feminism, and philosophy. And today's fact is... Perfection is problematic. Or perhaps I should say perfectionism is problematic because it's the desire to have everything perfect before you can go ahead and complete something or move on to the next thing or progress at any given level that I really want to talk about today. So let's dig into that right now. This is a little bit of a follow-up in a sense to last week's video and last week I talked about using yoga props and how that's not cheating and that we have to kind of get away from that old toxic way of thinking that anything that helps somebody who needs help is somehow a cheat and uh, and that you're not really doing the real thing properly. So related to that is the idea that everything has to be perfect in order for you to be doing it or that you have to be perfect in order to go on to another level or take on something new or even consider a project complete. So I want to look at this in relation to fitness and physical activity as I always do but also in relation to some of the news that has been happening here in the Halifax area in the last week. I got a lot of interesting questions and feedback from people both in person and a few online, mostly in person, from people who watched my video and said, oh, you know, I never really thought of that before. Um, you know, I, I feel like if I'm not if I'm not fully doing every move in a yoga class, if I'm not perfect, then I shouldn't be there. And that's really, I think, keeping a lot of people away from physical activity of any particular type. We hear this all the time in yoga. Oh, I'm not flexible enough to do yoga. And I taught dance, several different types of dance for many, many, many years. And people would say, oh, I'd love to dance, but I can't come to dance class because I can't dance. And it's, as an instructor, that's really bizarre and quite irritating and sometimes kind of funny because of course you would go to the class to learn how to do the thing. But that's me coming at this from the perspective of being an educator. That's not really the same perspective that everybody brings in as a brand new participant where things are intimidating and you don't know if you're going to be good at it or not. There's an old saying that's been around for as long as I can remember and has gone through quite a few iterations in the decades I've been hearing it, which is perfection is the enemy of progress. And sometimes you hear that as perfection is the enemy of good or there's multiple variations. It's usually attributed to Sir Winston Churchill, um, but I went looking for an official source on this to see if I could figure out where this actually came from and, and where he was quoted as saying this, and I couldn't find one. So I think this is probably a case of Churchillian drift. Churchillian drift is basically what happens when people hear something like that that's very wise, very good advice, um, and don't know who it originally came from, so they attribute it to Sir Winston Churchill. Or it actually can be anybody else. It can be anybody who sort of has a reputation for saying smart things. It's been around for a long time. Different things have been ascribed to pretty much any historical figure, uh, especially if they're not alive to refute the claim. But um, the internet, of course, makes all of that go even further because these things get put into memes. The meme is misattributed and so on and so on. And it just snowballs, you know, as it does. And of course, as William Shakespeare said, you can attribute anything to anybody on the internet. All joking aside, perfection or perfectionism gets in the way because if you don't start somewhere, you're never going to get further along. And it doesn't matter what, what that is. It can be yoga, it can be dance, it can be whatever you want to learn. A few days ago on Monday evening, I did a, an extra workshop and I do local workshops as much as I can. There's something I really enjoy and I get to meet new people and teach new people all the time. And this was a workshop on how to do chair yoga for a local uh, senior support center. I talked a lot about modifications. I do that in all my physical activity classes. That's my big theme. And I talked about, you know, if you are doing an arm stretch, say, I might be able to do it over here, but maybe your arm stretch is over here. And what I got back from most of the participants was shock at that. They said things like, oh, I thought I had to be able to do this before you'd even let me in the class. As I said last week, yes, there are always going to be some classes that are like a beginner, an intermediate, an advanced, those kinds of levels. But if a class is listed as open level, then those modifications should be there and you should be feeling welcome to come in. There isn't a prerequisite. The way schooling is done, the way post-secondary education is done, that we get sort of this mindset of these absolutes about prerequisites and skill sets. And if I don't perform perfectly, I can't be there. Part of this too comes from marketing. And I know I pick on marketing a lot, but you know, the shoe fits, right? The thing 
that marketing people are taught when they're going through their post-secondary education training is that fitness things should be aspirational. This is what we should want to be. So they put the most perfect looking models with the most perfect hair and makeup on something on, you know, whether it's print copy or advertisements on TV for the latest workout sneaker. Problem is not everybody aspires to look like that or have that particular outcome. So it gets, gives you a really narrow box of what fitness looks like. And for a lot of people, if they don't see themselves represented in some way, shape or form, the message is not only you're not welcome here. The message is if you're not ever going to be this, why bother trying? This is why we need more representation. Representation matters, okay? You've all seen that on a million videos and hashtags. The other example I wanted to use for this is something that has come up recently here in the city of Halifax, Canada, where I live. It's just 25 years last month that I moved here to Halifax and I've considered it my home for a very long time. Like many places around the world, we're struggling economically, especially post COVID and, and multiple lockdowns and things. As a result of that and many other economic factors, we have a problem with housing right now in Halifax. It's almost impossible to find a place to live here, even if you have the money to afford it, which a lot of people don't. Like any city, uh, and we're not a big city, but we're still a city, so we have the same problems. We have people who are unhoused, and I, I try not to use the word homeless. Um, they are unhoused. It is a temporary condition, we hope, for these people. People that are unhoused are sleeping in tents, and a number of volunteers here in the city a few years ago started putting up small temporary shelters. They're basically like, sort of like your storage shed that you'd have in the backyard that you keep your lawnmower in. They're about that size, roughly the same shape. And they're thrown together very quickly, and they have a door with a lock on it, so somebody can stay in there for several nights or weeks on end if they need to, and can lock the door behind them. It's a really clever idea that is an absolute band-aid solution to a much, much bigger problem. Those of you who've been following me on Twitter have seen some of the drama, because I've been reposting it nonstop for about a week now. But a week ago Wednesday, the city police here in Halifax were instructed and carried out the order to remove these people from basically public spaces. It was it was NIMBYism, right? Not in my backyard-ism. They were just hauled off. Some, some protesters showed up uh, at one of the main sites downtown. There were quite a few arrests. There was at least two dozen arrests. Uh, numbers are still kind of a little unclear on that. Needless to say, it got pretty nasty and uh, resulted in numerous injuries, uh, not the least of which was a 10 year old girl being pepper sprayed by the police. These are some of the headlines from a few articles uh, about what happened last week. I will put the actual links to these news stories in the box below in case you want to look at them. I'm also going to pop a link down there for Halifax Mutual Aid. They are the group that is doing the emergency shelters and they are taking the lead in helping the people who were evicted last week uh, from their shelters and from their camping spaces. So if you can give them some help, if you're in, interested in helping out here in Halifax or even if you can just give them some visibility, some shares on social media, that kind of thing, uh, please do that. It would really help. And of course, do the same for whatever city or town you're in. Find your local equivalent group and help them out if you can. What I want to discuss is the reaction of some of the members of our city council in the last several days. And I'm not going to call anybody out specifically because frankly, it's the whole bl bloody bunch of them. A couple have said things like, well, temporary shelters like that aren't really doing any good and they're not going to solve the homelessness problem. And we're just one small city council in one tiny little city in Eastern Canada. We can't solve the homelessness problem. This is the same problem. Once again, perfection is the enemy of progress and even the enemy of good and certainly the enemy of just, you know, basic protection and keeping people safe for a little while while we figure something else out. Nobody who constructed those shelters thinks it's a permanent solution to homelessness. That's absolutely silly and bizarre. What they were trying to do is reduce harm as much as possible with the quickest means possible. What ends up happening is when it comes down to perfection or looking only at the big picture and going, I'm just one little person, I can't solve that giant picture, is it sort of paralyzes people from doing anything. And, you know, we have a saying in fitness, which is something is always better than nothing, meaning specifically exercise. It's always better to do a little bit of exercise if that's all you can fit into your life than no exercise at all. If you can only work out for 10 minutes, work out for the 10 minutes. If you cannot fix the homelessness problem, provide somebody with a tent. It's going to provide value and some safety and security for that person 
temporarily, it's not perfect. You're not buying them a house, but it's better than doing nothing. And I think a lot of people are holding themselves back for that need of perfection and maybe doing a little, a little bit of gatekeeping there with each other, maybe as colleagues, maybe a little crab bucketing of, well, it's not good enough, so why are you bothering? It's not gonna be everything. No one person's gonna do absolutely everything for a given cause. So that's it, folks. A little bit of a pep talk, a little bit of a rant about my city councillors. <laughs> Get out there, try something. Something's always better than nothing. And in the meantime, lift heavy, fight the patriarchy, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye.